talking about money transfer to buy provisions? Yes. yes. But don't you know about Baluo? 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 What is Baluo? Baluo is a service that your son can use to send provisions directly to you guys from the shop. And you don't have to worry about the exchange rates. Tell me how Baluo works. It's very simple. Just log on to baluo.com and shop or download the app on your phone. You can shop on the website or using the app to buy online basic products for your family and friends. With Baluo, you decide what your money is spent on. Your money, your choice. Buy online products for your family and friends in the Gambia, Senegal, Nigeria or Mali. Baluo, better than sending money. For the first time in the history of the Gambia, Gambia Printing Publishing Corporation proudly introduces the Biliomatic Exercise Book Printing Machine. The machine has the capacity to print more than 20,000 books per hour. Yes, 20,000 books per hour. It also prints magazines, newspapers, calendars, flyers, normal books and all kinds of printed documents plus items at affordable prices. With the Biliomatic Printing Machine, GPPC can now render high quality and non size restricted printing service supply across the sub region. Rush now and partner with GPPC for all your public and private printing service needs. Print with us today, and you'd be offered highly professional, reliable, and efficient service delivery by our team of experts. The Gambia Printing and Publishing Corporation is here to meet all demands and is reliable at all times. For more info, contact us on 437-4493 or 437-4402. GPPC is Gambian and it's yours. Gambia Social Registry Household Data Collection Exercise. The government of the Gambia, with support from World Bank, is developing a social registry as part of its move towards an integrated social protection system in the country. Gambia Social Registry will serve as a single entry point for the various social protection programs in the Gambia and will be hosted by the National Social Protection Secretariat at the Office of the Vice President. The Social Registry shall comprise households' demographic and socio-economic data. This information will guide future social protection program interventions in the Gambia and facilitate rapid identification of beneficiaries for programs. It will have the capability to be linked to other databases when these databases become automated. The enumeration teams from Gambia Bureau of Statistics GBOS, will visit, interview and register every household in your community. So don't be left out. However, inclusion in the registry does not automatically qualify one for a particular social program. Social Registry has taken consideration of the key principles for personal data protection. Therefore, your data shall be confidential and protected. In view of this, we call on all and sundry to register their households with enumerators from GBOS. This message is brought to you by the Department of Information Services under the Ministry of Information.
Hello and welcome. The brunch is back as promised. And this is our weekly look at uh, current affairs. That is the events that shaped the country over the last couple of days. Let's say over the last seven days. Now, Parliament has gone into an extraordinary session where several, four bills uh, were tabled and all successfully passed amid a little bit of controversy, of course. But what exactly are in these bills and what do they mean for the country and for specific, specific groups of people who are directly concerned? Well, to explore all that, that's why I drag into the studio to people who followed very closely uh, the, some of the bills, at least, were tabled uh, in the National Assembly. They include uh, the Victims' Reparations Bill, which we are told is going to end up uh, by the establishment of a commission that will preside over uh, res reparations for victims of the Jamme era crimes. There is also the Commission of Inquiry Amendment Bill, and there is also a bill which uh, is dealing with people who have been banned uh, from taking appointments. And then, lastly, but not the least, the controversial former president's bill. All those bills have been successfully passed, but like I said, we would like to explore what do they entail. Why is it that one of them at least has drawn so much controversy over the last couple of days? Now, with me in the studio to do just that is Sirandao. Sirandao is the country representative for Aneke, as well as a, chairm uh, uh, a member of the board of uh, the Victim Center for uh, Government Center for Victims of uh, Jamme Era Crimes. Uh, Serenda, welcome. Thank to you very the much. Happy to be here. Good. Of course, Kemeseng Man, Kemeseng Sane Kex is a journalist, blogger, and activist as well who follows parliamentary proceedings very, very closely. And in this hour, or one and a half hour, he will also help us uh, go through. Uh, these very important activities that Parliament has been going through over the last couple of days. Kex, welcome. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Good. I think we go straight to the victim reparations bill uh, uh, because it's one it was much, much, much awaited. And there have been a lot of uh, uproar in the media um, because of its long absence from the bills that have been uh, presented. I remember the last ordinary session when it was not there, people started saying, wow, What's happening? Um, but then, of course, the government have come with, a, uh, you know, calling of an extraordinary, you know, meeting and with the certificate of urgency. So let's go through reparations bill. Sharon Dow, as I said, have followed the bill closely, even I think during the validation. Sarah, welcome. What exactly has been the reaction of the victims or your personal reaction of um, the bill when it was tabled by the honourable minister? And having followed the validation, let me just begin by saying, what exactly is in the bill now? Uh, what is in the bill yeah. is, uh, thank you. Thank you for inviting me once again. Thank and um, we've been very relieved. Mm -hmm. That reaction has been relieved. Uh, being relieved that the bill has finally passed. Mm -hmm. As you mentioned, long awaited. Yes. It's been a long process. We really, we, we had hoped that it would have been here. We would, it would have been passed yeah. uh, a while Much back. More. And even in the in the TRC's, um, in the government's implementation plan, mm -hmm. the bill was supposed to be passed by June. Okay. So, um, it much awaited indeed, a delay, but better late than never. Mm -hmm. So, we're happy to be that we finally have a, a piece of legislation. We have law. It is now law that uh, victims would uh, be reparated, and there's a framework mm -hmm. to guide what that reparations, which is which was started, the reparation process, which was started by the Truth Commission. We can recall the Truth Commission's mandate. One of its mandates was to grant reparations to victims, and they did grant interim reparations to some victims. Um, so this is continuing that process and also making sure that um, victims who are eligible at that time, uh, what we have missed, uh, are taken on board. Mm -hmm. Because we all remember that the TRC had limited time um, and limited resources, of course, so they could not investigate all the all the crimes that were allegedly committed um, or reportedly or reported or, or un unreported. Mm -hmm. So obviously, um, they would be need to look into that as much as also to really there is need to further go now and investigate these allegations um, and uh, look at these recommendations and work around them. So definitely that the bill basically, like you said, is the um, has been said is the 
a commission being set up mm -hmm. that will now handle the process of reparations to victims, including uh, victims who have already been identified by the um, by the TLRC, yeah. and inviting victims who did not come forward to come mm -hmm. forward for their cases to be documented, mm -hmm. and of, of course following for the investigations. That would be all. That would be done just like the TRRC. When you come and make a statement, that you claim there is, they look back mm -hmm. and they had look witnesses and testimony, other testimonies and circumstances, to confirm that, that what you are, what you are, um, that indeed happened. Because of course, it's a process. It's a legal process. Law is the law is the law. Nice. You cannot just accuse or claim something without it being verified and investigated. So the T the commission would now take on that responsibility of taking on um, new victims who did not come forward at that time. Again, like I mentioned, the TRC could not investigate everything, so there is uh, room still for, for the cases to come forward. Do you, have, do you have any knowledge as to how long will this commission come in? Did the bill set uh, how much time frame before the commission established? The bill in the bill that was that the validated bill that we that I looked at I don't I didn't act, I couldn't follow the process of the um, of the national assembly so I don't know what the amendments were but the bill that we looked at pre before it went to the um, uh, before it went to Dashal, it was ten years, but subject to renewal. If no, I'm talking about. Uh, I'm talking about how the long period, the, Yes, yeah. sorry, I meant the period. The period is the 10 period years. of the commission. Yes, I mean that's what I meant. Ten actually, years. That's quite it's a ten lot. years. But the setting up um, of the commission. The, the from setting the, from of the, the commission the bill, from the, the from the past, mm. Yes, from the passing. Um, the setting up of the commission. So the commission has a ten year uh, time frame in the bill that I looked at. I am. Um, I don't know if the um, the amendments included that. If mm. they. Uh, National Assembly change that maybe Kex can shed yeah, some yeah. light on that because mm -hmm. he followed the proceedings. Yeah. But it was ten years and it could be renewed if there was need to. Con if there's still work that needs to be done um, to 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 look at all the things and can do the reparations and address the uh, the needs of the victims. And we have to take into account that when we talk about reparations, reparation is not just you know paying out compensation yeah. and medical reparation. It also includes the 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 accountability process exactly the accountability process uh, as that although um the bill itself mm -hmm. doesn't actually um look at this that part there's a special there are other bills that are set up mm -hmm. but there's you know investigations that need to happen and investigations can take time so yes the reparation is is is, is, is as defined by the bill is much wider than just Monetary you know getting money together and you know giving compensation um to the to the to the victims it it, it, it is more than that yeah, you, yeah, one thing you missed in my question is, uh, did it specifically said the time of passing and the time of setting up of that commission? Uh, what time of duration? I know the commission can last for 10 years, but when is it going to come up? Immediately mm -hmm. after the passing, three months, two months after? Or? Well, if it says the commission, it would be when the commission is set up. Yeah, when Because when right the, now there's no did, commission. Did they give any time frame as to? Um, well, they have to start. The, 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 now the, the administrative process has to start. start yeah. They have to get the 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 the, 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 the commissioners. And there's a process that I just outlined in the, um, how they get in the bill on how to appoint uh, commissioners. Yeah. Oh, the chair, the vice, the the vice chair, the secretariat. Yeah, I see. Um, I know that the, the commission is a is not a permanent commission. Okay. Um, and uh, so the commissioners are not going to be permanent commissioners. Oh, okay. They will, they be, will just they will, be convening. They will be coming. They will be convening, convening as needed, I which see. is a very good part thing because right. it, it it really it means the money <laughs> will go to the victims and, the and, victims, and, yes. and the cost will go. But there will be a secretariat, of course, because they the said there will be three committees within the commission. Uh, if I say one or three, so one will be yeah. for reparation, one will be that that kind Com of yes, describe. for compensation, reparation, and yeah, rehabilitation. And yes. So they will be they will be looking at the different aspects of the um, of the of the reparation that is under the purview of the of the framework, the the, the, the bill or the act. Now, okay, we will discuss more of the nitty gritties. Uh, mm -hmm. Kex, uh, what was your take on the reparations bill? Uh, um, that was I think it was the one the first that was passed. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like uh, she said, uh, this is long overdue mm -hmm. as uh, the victim has been crying for far too long mm -hmm. uh, that, uh, you know, they need, uh, their pride need to be considered by the government. Yeah. And we all accept what happens here for the past 22 years uh, is not a normal circumstances. Mm -hmm. And people are definitely suffering in terms of uh, looking for them to come back to the society either mm -hmm. in terms of uh, they are struggling with their health. Uh, some lose uh, everything or the only family that they have or the parents. So mm -hmm. 
they are going through so many tough times and they need to be uh, seen or oh, anyway, the society has to accept them mm -hmm. know that they are part of us and what happens with them we sympathize with them and mm -hmm. show them that we care mm -hmm. and show them the love and that cannot be achieved uh, without government uh, stepping in mm -hmm. to show that we care and we are together in this exactly. so coming with this uh, it's long overdue but finally it is here it has been passed uh, or just waiting for the president to assent it then yeah. it becomes a law yeah. and the earlier the, or the quicker uh, they set up the commission and start actually uh, looking at the plight of these people the better yeah. uh, it's something that was needed and uh, finally it is here and we hope uh, that uh, it doesn't only stop at the TRS. that was the my biggest take uh, mm -hmm. in terms of uh, uh, the bill itself because yeah. i was like they do, do because there was this uh, argument going on that you know TRRC was uh, more like the other side of the people will say that it targets only people that they feel like they are in the other side of them and they yeah. didn't capture yeah. everybody. Exactly. It's more, more political. But when the bill comes, it's telling you that actually this is beyond that, like those who didn't have the opportunity mm -hmm. uh, to come before the TRRC will also, we will look at their issues and they can even come forward to the commission and tell them that I was one time a victim and you explain your situation to them, how you have gone through and they will evaluate and see actually whether what you are uh, 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 saying is true and they will look at it and i think uh, during the debate the issue of the farafenia attack came yes. which was not actually captured by the trrc where six soldiers actually die mm. but uh, mr minister dauda jallo made it very clear that you know they have uh, captured this thing and even if you look at the government white, white paper, papers, they yeah. have mentioned it there that these are people that have died and it is going beyond that those who didn't have the opportunity mm -hmm. to come before the trrc now they have the opportunity to come and tell their ordeal uh, to the, uh, the commissions and they now, will pick it up how so, was this received by the parliamentarians how was it delivered was this one as much controversial as others or this one was more or less an anonymous yeah it was controversial in terms of the certificate of emergency you know okay. Okay. people were again why why is uh, it so uh, why is so urgent that it will come under the certificate of emergency uh, that you know the victims were one time in parliament i had a, a argument uh, that the key is that the victims were one time in parliament and they were arguing mm -hmm. uh, for uh, these things to come uh, before the a national assembly yeah. and by that time the government doesn't see it as a need yes. why now they are bringing so for them they feel like okay maybe uh, there is a political uh, <laughs> score that they are trying to look at so they said it should come uh, under a normal circumstance like a normal bill yeah. uh, how normally uh, the normal bills will be introduced where they will be uh, committed to a particular committee where they will invite subject matter specialists yeah. to actually have a discussion in regards to these things okay. uh, why is others actually uh, you know argue of the uh, the urgency in terms of why should it come on the certificate of urgency so this were some of the disagreement almost uh, few uh, on the minority side actually actually didn't actually look uh, see that there was an urgency in the whole issue yeah. so they argue about the certificate of urgency in the whole issue that they could have allowed them to look at uh, have an opportunity to, to look, look at, at the bill more, uh, most, most, more closely, more closely and but at least there's one thing everybody except of course you are right there's a small portion of uh, Parliamentarian who still believe that the whole idea of transitional justice is a witch hunt. Yeah. So you you more, you probably were not surprised when one of the National Assembly members from that side, Al Mamiji, said, yeah. um, "The president's assets, mm -hmm. you know, assets derived from the sale of the former president's assets, I mean, should not be uh, used as reparations." Yeah, that was his argument, and he went further to say that uh, because there will be another commission of inquiry, uh, uh, TRC, <laughs> which, after which Barrow one? administration, which one? because he made up the Haruna <laughs> Jammeh case that, you know, there are people that have been killed uh, during the Jammeh regime, there oh, are people okay. whose uh, properties were not a properly seized. So after this one, so if you set the precedent of selling a former president's asset yeah. to uh, pay the victims, then that means that if Barrow too left, then his. Uh, so asset, he believed that even Barrow lived there, <laughs> so, so there will that, always be commission. <laughs> so that was his argument. For him, he didn't say, he said the government should not rely on Jammeh's asset at all, use it as a repatriation. A repatriation but I think the government made that that declaration. I, I remember when Tamid was in uh, office, yeah. uh, he made, he said that it is only logical that the person who caused all this trouble, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, did pay for yeah. some of these things. Sarah, you follow that? Of course, and I agree totally. If you benefit from, if you cause harm to people and you benefited from causing that harm, it's natural that your your assets Absolutely. should should be should be taken and, and and paid reparation. So that I don't I don't understand what what they mean. I mean the state. If we look at it from the commission, let's look at the Jaina commission. Mm -hmm. The assets that Jaime took, mm -hmm. 
is money is belonging well, to, the, to, the, to, the, to, to the people. Yeah, so therefore, yeah. that should come back to the people. Yeah, the minister says so that. if this government is going to pay reparations, yeah. it, who are they paying? The people. The people. So it's so where, only, only natural. Where's the first place to start? Yes, where, so the, it's only natural that the first place to start would be from and, that, and, and, from, and that think, from that pool. I think of, the government. Uh, I don't know whether you monitor this from your victim center level. The government once said they had three hundred million dollars. Uh, it was said in Parliament by the minister mm -hmm. that three hundred million has been raised from the sales. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, so, it's only so, so that's, that's a good. A, that would that's be a, good a, that's a that's a that's a big pool yeah. that the victims should be should benefit from. I mean, so like I said, it's only natural mm -hmm. that those the, that that money should come back to the people. And if the state is paying the people mm -hmm. uh, in time for reparations, it should be it should it should be taken 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 sure. from there. And um, you know, I just wanted to just pick back on one of the things that Kek said that victims say the mm -hmm. reparations that they do something here do they deserve? Yeah. It is actually their right. Yeah. I think we have to realize that it is, reparation yes. is a right. Yeah. Yeah. And the concept that I want to usually like to think about when it's you probably talk about reparations is the if you are if somebody hits your car, mm -hmm. right? You are driving in the street in the road, in the road and somebody hits your car, you expect to be to, to, to get to, to be reparated, yeah, to be you know, adequately. adequately compensated <laughs> Covered, for that. Damage, yeah. So the person, first thing you would say, the entrepreneur comes in a different form. If that person is wrong, you would expect them to say, I am sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? That is reparation, yeah, isn't it? Yes. And then if they damage your car, yeah. then they should fix your car. Absolutely. If they cause you injury, Absolutely. then they should pay for your Absolutely. for your, for your, for your right. medical, yeah, medical, yeah. medical 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 bills. Absolutely. So it's that same concept that it's in law, in our local laws and in international law, it's the right of the victims that yeah. they have. It is not a favor exactly. that the government is being is doing for the for the victims. Mm -hmm. It is not just a consideration. Oh, you government mm -hmm. Yes, that, that is fine. Yeah. the will at least and the, driving at, at it least is, the, you know shows that you yeah, are doing what you're will, supposed to do. The political yeah. will, yeah. you know, and, and the urgency. All of that shows that really the but you're doing what you're supposed to do, Absolutely. which is the, the, the law, um, international laws demands that if by human rights violations are committed, uh, the victims are, are eligible and entitled to. Do. It's an entitlement. And, and I think the government defended, the minister defended the, this, yeah. this bit about Yames Asset. Yeah. Uh, he said oh, when yes. the government decides to do it, and that's, that's how. I think, yes. I, think uh, I, I, I tend to notice a greater goodwill now on the side of government than before. Of course, you know, politicians always consider elections and <laughs> stuff like that. They, they, they sound much bolder now. Yeah, yeah. Than, election, than, election is the problem. Yeah, election, the election was a problem. <laughs> the they always, always problem. consider elections. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Okay. Uh, but then, look at it again. Um, if you look at the commission, uh, the, the, the bill, uh, Bot Sira, and it, uh, it, 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 it suggests that um, the, the, the victim should be... Um, reparated in such a manner that uh, it will be a little bit satisfactory. That reminds me of uh, the guideline drawn by the TRRC. Most victims felt that that was too small a reparation, uh, to call it a reparation. Even though the TRRC argued at the time that that was the money available to them. So uh, is it that this commission is expected to draw up uh, different guidelines for compensation to, to mingle, or for example, to, uh, to, you know, to, to at least meet international standard if there is no international standard but at least um, you know a standard that can be seen to for example in the case of disappeared persons tortured victims um, stuff like that um, people thought that the TRC guideline was too small for anybody to call a, com a compensation do you expect this commission coming up to draw different guidelines well the role of the one of the Things that been functioned of the um, commission that it has been charged is to look at that again, yeah. look at the compensation structure, yeah. uh, what was done and what can be what is possible based on the the resources that that will be available mm -hmm. to the commission. Yeah. Um. So this is something that we expect to be. We don't expect it to get any smaller. Yeah, absolutely. When they review, because you cannot go lower than that. Yeah. But we do expect that. Um. You know, based on this, they will they will look at it, and there's been some. Guidelines also in how to assess mm -hmm. assessment percentage point. I mean, not point percentage, but yeah, points. The points. A uh, point system for, that yeah. was that is put in the bill to yeah. that is allocated for different violations yeah, and how much weight that they would carry. Yeah, yeah. And um, obviously, it's based on the pool of pool of resources that is available. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, you're talking, we have the, the government initially said one hundred fifty-five million dollars have been put aside. If you put Jamis three hundred million, 
But the government never put money aside anyway. <laughs> well, that but was, that was, at least that the was commitment. from the 20, huh? uh, that was from a previous budget, which yes. has now, which is no longer available. So it would no longer available. But at least, but at, but at least the pledge is there. Yeah. Well, we'll expect the government to pledge to make their pledges of annually during the time of the commission how much they are going to allocate budget in the budget allocation. Yeah. We expect the government, and that is part of the source of funds from the from the from the bill yeah. that it will come from the government. So we would expect that in the next budget, the government how much money they have allocated to the um, to the reparations would, would bill, and then this will also include the other sources of funds which will be yeah, from the, the president, sales of the assets. I remember the, the president met and not some. just the president, but also once the other perpetrators. Yeah. We have to be you know, that the bill. It's not just the president. Um, if you look at the, um, if, if uh, somebody is compensated mm -hmm. and uh, a perpetrator is taken to court mm -hmm. and is found to be uh, guilty mm -hmm. of violating that person's rights, that perpetrator's assets could be sold Ooh. and refunded back to the government. Wow, that could be. <laughs> because if you, like you said, if you do harm, yeah. you, you must pay you for must that harm. So if that perpetrator, perpetrator has a house that is one million, for example, mm. and um, they, they, their victim was compensated 600,000. Mm. So if that asset is sold, that 600,000, the government will now take it back yeah. and will give you a 400,000 wage it. Wow. <laughs> so God. that is also that's part of and that, that's only fair. Yeah. So the state, this, the money of the state, it's not the state, it's the people Money. People's money. So if you benefited and if you from that uh, from that period, you need to pay back the people. Absolutely. So we have to realize that you know this is necessary because it is not the government. The government does not have money. Not money it's so. uh, all our money is put together, collected. So yeah. we should demand Absolutely. that if somebody the... benefited, they should pay us back. Yeah. And the government said, uh, in terms of raising funds, they will also they hope to attract funding from international sources. I the president met some people. A couple of weeks back, and he mentioned about this uh, the need for support for reparations victims. Yes, they're he, asking he for support. Yeah, they're he asking mentioned. for support. But then yeah. one of the things that has been very clear, and usually, I think in, even internationally, or, or the the trend has been that the government governments are expected to pay reparations. They, they need. will support other other mechanisms, but yeah. generally, yeah. the state of the country is expected to be responsible for the uh, for the for the for this for the funding of reparations. Uh, but I'm sure there would be there could be assistance in other forms. Yeah, he it doesn't have to money. That, uh, there could be assistance in medical on the medical side, providing the technical expertise yeah. uh, to to go through the process of the investigation, providing the medical expertise to support the victims in their medical, providing scholarships. Yeah. Those are all ways of supporting that could be explored, mm. um, and also maybe agreeing on some of our donors on you know some of the um, you know developmental budgets that could be used towards this. To make it more, um, to make it more transformative, to make it as uh, as uh, make it easier for the government. But yes, there's a. I'm sure um, these discussions will be ongoing and will continue. But let's let's look at uh, some of the structures that has been envisaged for the commission. Mm -hmm. um, for example, the commissioner's appointment. They said the minister shall submit names recommended by the panel. A panel thing. I think a panel will be set mm -hmm. up to recommend yes. names. Yes. Uh, let me go a little bit back. Yeah, it says. The composition of the commission. The commission shall consist of seven members, four of whom shall be women. So that so so, so already he's going to be more women there <laughs> than men. Absolutely. He said seven members, four of whom shall be women, and they shall possess the following qualification. They must be known for for of, of, of people of competence, probity, and integrity. They must have a deep understanding and knowledge of human rights violations committed during the regime of former President Jammy, and they must be a Gambian citizen. And the chairperson of the commission shall, in addition to the qualification specified section one, possess an undergraduate degree, have 10 years experience in public administration, and they said the commission shall consist of two victim representatives, two youth representatives, one from a disability organization. Now, in selecting members, the panel shall have regard to the victim representation agenda. So let's go to the appointment. The minister shall submit names recommended by that panel to the president for appointment and the panel shall consist of a representative of each of the following umbrella organizations so these people should be the panel that should recommend to the to the president that's public service commission should provide a panelist the association of non-governmental organizations the stango the bar association the bankers association and the medical and dental council so each will be represented in and this. And we also have the Alliance of Victim-Led Organizations. Alliance, part of of the Alliance of Victim-Led Organizations. Oh, the Victim-Led, yes. Um, there's also part of the panel. Okay. And it says the representative of the government shall be also co-opted into, um, into the commission, mm -hmm. which we objected to. 
Ah. Um, the, when we did the validation, this is something it came when it came back from the commission, uh, yeah. from the from cabinet. Yeah. They, we didn't we we didn't object to having a representative from the government. Mm -hmm. What we objected was that that person should not have voting rights. Ah. Um, but um, we were overruled, overruled, and this was put in forward. I am not sure if the parliament had any objection to that, but I know that. Um, the civil society had an objection to having the, that government representative having a voting right. They should be represented uh, there, but not having a voting right in that in that committee. Okay. Um, so yes, that is uh, that was one of the um, challenges we we we, we talked. We I mean, not challenges, but things something that we did not yeah, agree to agreed. when we did the after we when we did the final look, review of the bill before it went to the to the to the parliament. Okay, and, and of course uh, the usual things uh, uh, that the members of the commission or commissioners should not hold a political party. I think that, that's no, important. Should, no, not, should, should not, not hold a, should not hold office in a political party. Obviously. Obviously. <laughs> that's, a, uh, that's very obvious. And, and must not hold, not hold and must not hold views that are contrary to the principles of the transitional justice process. Yeah. You so, cannot, so if there is somebody you, who is if, if you believe that they the committee the TJ process is a witch hunt. Yeah, you, 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 cannot, yeah, you cannot be, <laughs> you cannot be, you cannot, be, you cannot be a commissioner in that case because you're already biased so oh, okay. that is already that is the and, and the person that. must not be somebody who's been banned from public office of so, course so of <laughs> course you'll be serving, uh, you'll and, be it's, and it's not is is an undischarged bankrupt well what do they mean by it? somebody who's very broke cannot serve it? if you are on this if you have been charged if you're in the process of being you know, bankrupt and you have not discharged your bank you haven't paid all your debts oh so uh, so, so i'm about but in your house so would they you find out yes <laughs> so if i'm nominated they're going to find out where i, I owe some yes <laughs> yes yes you, there will have to be some investigation to look at the person oh, okay that, the person. Uh, you, you, i mean your declarations you would make declaration of declaration. course you'd expect to make declarations uh, of your situation uh, which i'm sure should if you're in a, if you haven't discharged a bankruptcy you should be able to dis disclose that uh, and if you disclose that yeah because you know, it's that going to be money so yes, we are talking about um, quite a you know, millions, and million, hundreds mil of millions, million, hundreds perhaps. of millions of uh, dollars that are for the people, and a person to be handling this should be a person of integrity Intricate, and a yeah. person who does not have the, the the who would not have incentive yes. to do otherwise. And and they, they said they talk about the remuneration, remuneration for them. They said the commission shall be ad hoc, like you said. Yes, you talk about it will be ad hoc. It will not be a permanent. It will not be permanent. Mm -hmm. They will meet on periodic basis to review proposals and make decisions on reparations but the commissioners shall be paid such allowances and benefits as may be determined by the minister yes the minister shall not vary the allowances or benefits of a commissioner to his or her disadvantage during his or her tenure so the minister should not discriminate as to what yes, commissioner a or b basically. should get ah, mm. interesting <laughs> okay and uh, any other takeaway uh, Kex? Yeah, like I said, you know, uh, the whole idea, you know, we are always good in terms of drafting documents and, you know, they are always yes. beautifully drafted. Perfect. Yeah. Beautiful documents. Uh, documents. <laughs> but at the end of the day, implementation, implementation becomes an issue. Yeah. And I hope that, you know, people have to understand, like she said, this is not a privilege but a right yeah. uh, that they deserve uh, to have. Uh, it was the government of the Gambia yeah. that violated their fundamental right in respective of who was in power, but it's the government of the Gambia that actually violated and that the same government should come and make sure that they correct the wrongs that they have committed uh, by uh, taking care of these people and the sooner it comes uh, the better for all of us uh, because uh, we need to come and bring these people back to the society and also it will help us in terms of uh, uniting the nation for us to come together you know understand that these are the people that are affected and they also feel like they are part of the society society care about them because that's the only way we can actually uh, live uh, peacefully when people whose rights are violated see themselves in the society people care about them show them love show them love and all these things then that's the time you will understand so the earlier the better for me and i can say it, uh, i will thank all the partners that actually participate in making sure that this bill come before the national assembly from the victim center from this organization to the ministry itself you know to the national assembly until now we have and i'm sure that uh, if we'll reach at the president he will just assent to it and it becomes law so that we can start the implementation of this thing good uh, uh, i mean Shira, before we move to the order Generally, how did victims uh, react to this, or, or, the, or, or the news has just been digested? Like I said, the news has been received with relief. Mm -hmm. um, like so, it's about time mm -hmm. <laughs> was the was the was the, But you know, very, very um, excited and happy that now uh, they can start. Uh, their expectations can start being realized in the in that sense. Um, for some of the victims that received some form of reparations during the uh, some during the interim period of the TRRC. Um, 
you know that was a drop in the bo- in 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 in, 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 in the in the, in the in ocean the for them um not necessarily i'm not just necessarily talking about the money but so many of them need medical attention uh, so many of them their kids have stopped going to school after that um, that we're getting support so many of them you know have needs that they cannot meet and um, this is one of the ways that they can they can they can expect to have that in terms of their socioeconomic standing in terms of your your healing like Heck said, you know, you can, it's very difficult when you have been harmed to just sit there and the person who harmed you has not even acknowledged the harm. And this is really a big way of acknowledging the harm. We would hope that the president would do some of the things that, you know, was recommended, a public apology. I think that is so, I, didn't, I don't think we even needed the bill for a public mm. apology to come into place. So, Mr. President, you know, the victims would really, it is satisfaction. From like I said, when, like, like I said, when we were talking, so ni tampong yesa moto mwa cha mgis ne mola toin the least you can expect is a balal maaha yeah, balal maaha ma that is something maybe that can con- be done maybe the context is not clear the president might or his advisors might say well i'm not the doer so i should not apologize directly it should have been the past president or the past president but, but, it, where, then, but then then the past president should be making the com- reparations it is the ah, state. In that case, yeah, it is the state. state. It, regardless of who so, is there, the president and the president, the president of Sorry, is now this representing the state mm, yeah. and the Sorry, people. The state, so uh, we expect the state. Yeah. Um, we expect the president, who yeah. is representing the state, who is yeah. the head of state, yes. <laughs> to come out and say that I am sorry so, that this. There happened. have been criticisms that, from his, um, I think, for even from the victims and his um, opponents, that he has never taken time to visit the victims and uh, yeah. or to listen to them. To listen to them, the victims don't feel acknowledged by the head of state but 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 movements such as this reparation bill oh, and you yes. talk about the coming of two more two more bills uh, yes. part of the transition of justice that's the prosecution and whatever the special prosecutions uh, those, the special those, prosecution those, those, are tang- those are tangible moves for of which you can tangible. most credit the government that's tangible but like i said sunit mm. tampong yesa moto mu de fari yeb te wala nem sore it of the des is to body yekla as they say in all of nga yek nit it's not about the money okay because some of the victims don't need the money mm-hmm. they just want somebody to acknowledge they, they, that you you did something wrong to me no, victim even, even when you need the money why do you think president find it difficult to i have no on? idea i cannot delve into that i'm sorry <laughs> i couldn't even want to begin to speculate <laughs> okay. on why, uh, Heck, why but i would think? i would say whatever reason is i would recommend i would strongly recommend that this is something that he definitely uh, should consider doing as soon as possible because really it will help in the process of healing for victims and uh, reconciliation and you know as we move forward what we want social cohesion you know sustainable peace and all of that it would make a big difference because we're human beings we have feelings <laughs> we just don't have men material needs we also have feelings that need to be addressed interesting well let's move on to a, a, a bill another bill that is uh, maybe a little bit uh, connected to this uh, reference that is the uh, the bill that says uh, people have been banned uh, from public office. Yes. Um, have you been following that uh, as you've been doing with the preparations bill in time, uh, by a uh, time of the validation or whatever? Yes, we had the opportunity to look at the banning from public office bill um, as, a, as a civil society and as victim organizations. We had the opportunity to look at the banning. And this is something that we've been discussing and the need for it has been discussed pre- previously so the, it's just a matter of um, now it coming into act and the need is really comes from the the fact that um in a in a legal framework in this country apparently i'm not a lawyer but apparently there is no legal framework to ban people from office so with the recommendations by these commissions to ban specific people the people that have been mentioned that have adversely mentioned from public office there needs to be the legal framework to effect that banning and this bill addresses that um, not just for the truth for the transitional justice process but it will also continue obviously mm-hmm. it is not limited to the transitional justice process or just to the people who were recommended by the truth commission the trrc but it will be future ongoing in the future if any commission of inquiry in the future comes into being and there's a recommendation for a, a public official to be banned or, or that individual you don't have to be a public official the individual to be banned from public office then that ban could be effected mm-hmm. legally how was this received? Yeah, this one was not actually. There was not even debate. There wasn't was debate. No, there was not debate. Everybody agreed. Everybody agreed, and it was just passed. So there was not much at all. Right. But like she said, you know, uh, you know, you must rely on law if you want to punish individual. We have seen where the TRRC recommended, 
uh, for some people to be banned from public office. So, you know, if you have to implement that, there must be a law that you will rely on. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the whole idea of coming with this uh, legislation, unless you have a provision that you will rely on, not only even at the table, but in future, wherever there is somebody who is banned of holding public office, then you know that you rely on a law you know, to implement those things. Because if there is no law there, then that's a problem. So I think that's why they came with this thing, at least to have a mechanism in place. And for me, it's a good step, you know, for so that people will hold public office know that uh, this is a position of service not just to come there and uh, do something different contrary to the course and the conduct of a public uh, officer so you mean in the past uh, for example when the trrc it has made recommendations mm -hmm. that some people should be banned from office yeah. but there wasn't any law mm -hmm. uh, to that effect yes, that's so, so that's why they send them on administrative leave. leaves here well, one, of, one of the reasons because the what well, the reason would be that the TR that some of these things are subject to invest for the investigation. I see. Yeah. So they have to investigate. The recommendation is that they should be banned from public the office. Um, that's a recommendation. So it's subject to investigations sure. as well, so that they would be um, they would be pop, um, permanently banned where they are found to be that um, that is found to be the case. The allegations are found to be true. Mm. So we have to also bear that in mind that the Truth Commission was a testimony of witnesses and victims. Mm -hmm. But when you're talking about law, mm -hmm. you would need to have some some type of criminal investigations okay, so. that would go with the, with that to, for it to be for the law to talk to come into effect. Otherwise, you can just somebody can just accuse anybody, uh, and then you know they recommend you for banding, and then it you, it is in effect. So there has to be some investigation that would need to be. So we need to make sure that the expectation is set right, that people know that this is this will be the process. Um, it could be that some people who are recommended for banning after in, for the investigation, mm -hmm. they, they realize that maybe the allegations were, did not hold true. And of course, even when things happen, you know the law, mm -hmm. you have to have solid evidence. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Where there is no evidence, then it, you know, it, can, it can be overthrown. Mm -hmm. So it is very important that if there are witnesses that have information, mm -hmm. when it is time to testify, when it is time to go to court and testify, they come forward. Mm -hmm. If they don't come forward, if the court does not have enough evidence that they can rely on it's to implement good. these things, it will be problematic. So really, we need, I think it's important that we highlight these things that so people know that if I have information mm -hmm. and I have evidence that can support this allegation, yes. I must come forward as a, as a responsibility. You mm -hmm. do not want, the last thing we want is we take these perpetrators to court and then they go scot free because there is no evidence. Yeah, that that is true. the last thing that we want. So people, please, mm -hmm. if we have, and then also it is important that we are documenting these inform these things now because mm -hmm. people forget. Absolutely. Information if information can get lost. Documents can get lost if you have those documents. Um, and 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 you know these things places can get can get for example the various sites of the people who have been disappeared. Mm -hmm. Um, if we don't start acting now, Absolutely. it's going to be very difficult yeah, to look I remember it because I, over time... I joined a team looking for uh, yeah. on my graves. Uh, yes, over time the I terrain was, changes, mm -hmm. just naturally. Mm -hmm. the, the grass grows, the trees fall, yeah, the, earth moves. the earth moves, and all those things are, are part of the process. So it is important, and that is one, one of the things about law, that the, the, the timeliness mm -hmm. yes. element of the law really yeah. has to be... Uh, has to be yeah, so evidence um, yeah. and timeliness. So over time, people forget people, and victims are dying, witnesses are dying yeah, also. That's another, thing, uh, that's another yeah. thing, which is why the reparation bill was, uh, you know, the certificate of urgency, I couldn't understand when they were talking about that. The victims are dying. Yeah. So, so you want me to go now through another process, elongated, we need yeah. to act soon. And this is a bill that was out there. Mm -hmm. And the, the parliamentarian knew that the bill has the been bill in, in been the process. In the All process the, if yeah. you are representing the people, you know there's a bill that is in the process. Yeah. It should be your responsibility to find out what yeah. the bill contains and yeah. be part of that process. Process, yeah. not just wait until. So I so, was really so, very disappointed. So, so on account I of the, say, when they, when on, a, they on, a, on account of the reparation bill, the certificate of organs, you have no argument with us. That 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 is really valid, isn't it? For the okay. account for this. For, on the account of the reparations bill. No, I don't see that they. The, the, there should be no criticism. They should, the, the certificate of urgency. I, that is what I'm saying. The victims, you know, the, all of these parliamentarians know most of these victims. Absolutely. That they, they have been dying. Mm. So there's a need to really address this. They know that the bill has been in the, in in, the making. In the offing, yeah. In the making. Yeah. So it is as a representative of the pe people, mm -hmm. if you know that. Uh, this, this is being worked on. You should you make it your business you know, to know what is the a, content of that there, bill. There was a there was one <laughs> MP who says rushing it can be a recipe for corruption. He said if if I mean the, the honourable men, um, member for Banjul South, Tumanja, he said, well, how worry is that um, 
rushing this thing can be another opening for somebody to indulge in corruption. I, 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 I don't see. I don't, I don't, see, I don't see it. I, yeah, I don't, I don't see, see it. I mean, she has her opinion, oh, but well, I don't I mean, see what spirit it. So I don't know what what, what was her justification. Yes. Yes. can support, but I don't see that. You were there when she said. Yes, she even went to what? say that she was a victim, but first place for people to understand that yeah. her father, I think, one of his. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. she made that very clear yeah. that she's a victim, but she wants to pass a law that has. Uh, gone through a total scrutiny uh, before it will be accepted and based on that you know for him if you roast this thing there are certain things that you might miss in terms of you know what has to be done but immediately it's passed it's now moved away from the air stage as national assembly members and that takes is to scrutinize every bill that comes before them so she didn't see any urgency when government is here if they are thinking about uh, uh, Taking care of these people, there are uh, budget allocated for uh, presidential talk for hundred million dollars. Why those money could not have been uh, uh, sent to these victims? So what? Why do today now? Now you are caring when the victims were there. The TRC finished their work since twenty oh, uh, two thousand and so. Well, that's why, the context. Right, so that's the context. They were mad. He said, "Tamit said he's a victim. He came, but he said that the certificate of urgency, you know, it's not justifiable." So, so you could see even the victims were there. But I don't know what for me. But for me, I don't see. Absolutely. I mean, they didn't have any issue with the certificate of urgency yeah, yeah. for the former president's bill. Yeah. That is where, where they, where we will come they did that. not have any issue that with the certificate of, of urgency for the former president's yeah. bill. And you're talking about the victims' victim, reparation bill. So for me, well, honestly, they, they had, they I was had. very disappointed. Yeah. With Tuma and all the members who who Madi, all of the members who are, because this is something. No, but, but that I mean, I mean, to be scrutiny. Fair, let me, the, just nah. let me, let me, let me just talk about the scrutiny of the bill. Mm -hmm. This bill for the past uh, since 20, 2022, mm -hmm. last year, this bill has been going through the process of validation mm -hmm. with the victims and the victim reparation bill. We spent three days at um, at Sindola mm -hmm. in Kanilai going through point by point, not just the victims, but with legal, from the Gambia Bar Association, the, the Female Law Association, the National Human Rights Commission. Such a curious place We went through it. every <laughs> single you, part you of it. You were in Zindola. <laughs> yes, it's a, it's, well. a, it's a national place. <laughs> what <laughs> a curious <laughs> place to validate. Reparations bill It's anyway. a very, very, it's a, it's, a, it's a very relaxing place, a beautiful place. <laughs> it's, a, it's a beautiful place. You should go there. I and I would, I would love to go there again. <laughs> to, for retreat, it's a, it's, it's a beautiful place. And no, it's, a, no. it's a national asset that really we should look into. But I digress. Yeah. <laughs> coming, back to, coming back to the bill, this yeah. is something that the victims... So, I mean, what they could have done, consulted with the victim association, consulted with the people, the, the TJ working group of the, um, on, of the tango, on the tango, has been scrutinizing this bill so closely. And they, we, not only that, the national validation. There was a national... Went nation, nationwide, mm -hmm. across the country, yeah. with ICTJ, talking to victims and talking to them about the bill. So there's several uh, uh, mm -hmm. activities were conducted talking to victims. Um, Madison, I listened to one audio where Madison was saying that they wanted to call victims one by one. Victims are not experts in reparations. Uh, and it will, how long would it take to call victims uh, one by one to ask them, ask them about this when they're sick Absolutely. and they need medical attention? Absolutely. For me as a victim, if you call me, I want to talk to you about it. I said, what I will say, I need a reparation right now, please. Just give <laughs> yeah. me whatever you can Obviously, give me. Yeah. So really, I really was very disappointed. Um, that they they were questioning the the urgency of this. Um, yeah. this. Yes, I can understand, but there are contexts. Mm -hmm. Everything has a context. context. So and then again, there was no argument around the certificate of urgency the, for the former president. There bill. was. And there was for for them from the from Tuma. Ah, uh, okay. From, yes. uh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's right. From Tuma, she, there was no issue with the certificate of urgency oh, okay. for the former president's bill, mm. but there was an issue with the victims. Mm. Yes, she's a victim. I think the context is that they, they they think that if things are rushed, like the COVID nineteen, uh, how to call it, uh, COVID nineteen, yes, funny, yes. yes. Know, where you have. Uh, I mean, excuse to spend something on an emergency. She yes. believed that that's where rooms, uh, a room is created. For but COVID, COVID was a, COVID was an emergency. Yeah. COVID was nothing was not planned. COVID is a virus yeah. that that came and so attacked you, us. You are, you are arguing that I'm, there was I'm ample arguing, time there, for them to familiarize themselves. I'm, with I'm the arguing bill. that yeah. there actually was consultation yes, with so, the victims, I see. Uh, extensive consultation. Okay. And I must say that you know the Minister of Justice. We call them our frenemies. We are not really friends, but <laughs> <laughs> but frenemies. we call them our I frenemies. Like <laughs> but in the sense that for this victim depression bill, they took on board pretty much all oh, the recommendations. Yeah. It took time, all yeah, the, they took time. Not just the time, but they took on board the recommendations of, of the, the victims, victims and yeah. the victim organizations and incorporated almost. Yeah. We had a couple of 
and things so I can mention the the voting right of the government yeah, representative yeah. and I think one other one other thing yeah, that yeah. I can remember. I remember the minister yes. saying there. But we there yeah. was extensive and the we can tell you that mo- some of the things that most of the things in there are things that we suggested mm-hmm. and to be amended they amended it and it was it was taken on board. Oh, I see. So there was extensive consultation. It was not rushed. I see. So for me I want to debunk that it was not <laughs> rushed. Okay. It was uh, and then there was ample time. It's been the bill has been the draft was for I think early 2022. Mm-hmm. It was been out there yeah. as a representative. You could have familiarized yourself Absolutely. with it, my yeah. friend. Yeah. They so have done that. <laughs> very disappointing. Absolutely. It's a very disappointing uh, for me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, and the third one too seemed to be a little bit. Uh, it, it has some connections with all this one. That is, when they said amendment, to the, uh, I mean commission of inquiry bill, amendments to the commission of inquiry bill. What do they mean by the text? Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think that too was passed. And yes. I, I, Amendments I, I, to the public. Is, they said po- um, um, Commission of Enquiry Bill. Mm-hmm. Commission of Enquiry. Uh, did I follow that? Then that mo- yes. Uh, that yeah. might be uh, another first one that has been. That has been. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't capture I can. I can. Uh, I, I hope it was introduced. I, think I can expand you, a little bit on that, that because yes. it was one of the bills that we were we were given. Uh, we, we looked at. It's yes. a very. It, it's a very small. Um, the, yes, it, it was the, mentioned here. So it com- the, what it did was a couple of uh, definitions were added. I think definition of minister uh, okay. and in the in the interpretation section and, and and white paper. Yeah. But the most substantial thing on that bill is adding, adding a section. I can't remember the section number. Mm-hmm. Um, that says that 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 allows for people who have been banned from a public office to be eligible for uh, amnesty. Ah. Um, in the in the in the. In the same concept as when somebody has been, you know, arraigned and has been sentenced and in prison, yeah. there's the presidential pardon. Oh, yeah, yeah. So in that same context, and again, we did not have any issue with it. The only thing that we want to be suggested, mm-hmm. I don't know if the National Assembly took it on board, was that in considering amnesty for somebody who has been banned, once they've met, met all the conditions, which is I think you must have served at least three years of your ban, you must have not committed any other crimes, obviously, mm. <laughs> and some other conditions. The conditions that are put there, we, we suggested that um, we add. We suggested adding that in in considering amnesty, the president consider also position of that person, mm-hmm. this, the, the, the the severity of the you right. know the the crime that was done, and and the, you know the level of involvement in that crime by the individual. For example, if you know. Two people are doing a crime. You have the driver and you have the killer mm-hmm. in the jungle. As like by looking, he was a driver. Yeah. You know the way you would treat the ki- the person who actually committed the murder. Yeah. And the way you would treat the person who actually drove the person to commit that murder yeah, would yeah. be slightly different. Yeah, yeah. So that was the suggestion that we added. But that's in essence the commission of inquiry amendment bill really was that that adding that session where if somebody has been banned from public office, which is a new thing mm-hmm. in our legislation, mm-hmm. there should be a, pro- a framework mm-hmm. for considering that person to be um, given amnesty yes, after yeah. they have so. met some condition, which includes at least three years of the of the ban, so having have served at least three of, the, of that ban and other conditions that um, I, I, I can't recall, but it's in the, in the bill. Good. Right. Well, let's go to the what I would call on that day in your, in your, in your assembly, the, the, the biggest elephant in the room uh, on that day, and that is the uh, former president's bill. Uh, I mean, I know, Sira, you, you probably might not be following that, but you must have uh, the opera, you must have had the opera coming from it, from its introduction right down to the, its passing, the controversies. It led to, for example, a walkout staged by members of the opposition uh, political parties, there are at least two, and independents there. And then, of course, uh, who will benefit? Who should benefit from the from from the, from the packages that are envisaged in the bill? All that, all, all that, all that came to show. But let's go first to a, a video um, that was uh, taken from the National Assembly. The Honorable Minister of uh, Justice, Dauda Jallo, has been asked a direct question, and that is, uh, can former President Jame benefit uh, from the goodies that have been envisaged in the in the in the bill (laughs) yeah so let's have that video charles uh, the minister clarifying um the state of uh uh, i mean who can who can benefit from the uh arrangements that has been in the bill charles if you have the video please honorable minister Now, with the specific 
questions as to the application of the act. Now, in the, in the 2007, of course, passed in 2006, but it came into force in February 2007. In the 2007 legislation, that act is only applicable to presidents who serve two terms minimum. So, under that old legislation, if you serve one term, you will not have benefited from even the allowances because they don't have a pension under that act. It was an allowance and then an office and maintenance of their house. If you haven't served two terms, you were not going to benefit. In the new bill, we said former president, simple. So if you serve one term and you leave, you will still be treated as a former president. If you serve two terms, you will still benefit. That's a departure from the old, old act. The other departure point is, under the old act, there is a provision to say if you are removed from office, you will be denied the benefits. That is not in this bill. And I see quite a number of you in the debate have started asking that. How about if you are impeached? How about this, that, that? And I think that question is expanded for specific questions, will Jamme uh, benefit or not? This is what I have to say with respect to that. At, at the level of the executive, we, we interrogated this issue. If you look at the definition of a former president, under the bill, no former president is excluded. However, you will have to look at the practical application of it. I would have avoided answering this, but because it's a direct question that was asked, we have to look at it directly as well. Now, former President Jami, which was a very direct question, even if he is deemed to be qualified to benefit from this act, the reality is former President Jame is a wanted person in the Gambia. He is, he is recommended to be prosecuted by the TRRC. Government has accepted that President Jame will be prosecuted. So he is a former president which cannot be denied. However, he is a former president that is in conflict with the law. And unless that conflict with the law is determined, even if he is entitled to benefit under this legislation, it will not kick him. Because like any one of us, if you are a suspect of having committed a crime, unless you deal with that issue and clear it, you cannot be entitled to it. You cannot be entitled to certain benefits. So that's my answer for that. If you look at the application of the act, of course, no former president is excluded. That is the spirit that it is coming. Nobody is expressly excluded. But the application of it, for specifically for President Jame, we would have avoided mentioning specific names. But because the direct, answer, the direct question is asked, President Jame, unless... Federal Minister, you could, have avoided answering, you could have avoided answering direct questions on individuals. Okay. Thank you, you for, know, for, for, for... Because for, that determination would be on the bill and what the consequences. Exactly. Because here, when you have the bill, it does not exclude, as you rightly said, it does not exclude anybody. Exactly. I, will, I will leave it at that, Honorable Speaker. Yes, for, it to, for you to be excluded cannot be determined now for somebody to say that somebody will be included or excluded. You know? So, that, that, that would be my, my, my response to that, 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 that question. Um, so, other than that, for the objective of, of the bill, it is pretty clear, and I think we are all on the same level, on the importance of, of the bill. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Well, 
there we there we there we there we had the honorable minister um of uh the honorable minister of justice uh um that would there um there we there we need to put down put down our uh, our, our we had the Honourable Minister, um, Daude Jalo, um, Kex and uh, Sira. Um, this is a, a specific question that was put to him, where to whether President Jame uh, would be uh, eligible for uh, to benefit from these packages that have been uh, envisaged under the bill, which we, we read uh, included, among other things, uh, a salary commensurable to uh, the sitting president, uh, chauffeur driven vehicles, a cook, a house, security, pension for the spouses, and etc. etc. All sort of things were uh, contained there, big fat allowances, etc. Now, what do you make of this, Sira? Uh, <laughs> Preposterous. It's really, for me, I, I don't have any words for this bill. It's just mind boggling for me. I mean, this is. Even countries that have much more than we do don't have this kind of perks for their former presidents. Mm. So why should we have something like this? For me, I would have I would have thought that the, the previous bill should be scrapped, really, because you're you're doing a service. You're appointed to take a job, mm -hmm. and then you retire from the job. Why should you have anything extra than what everybody else is having, even as a president? Mm -hmm. You should be entitled to your pension like everybody civil, any other civil servant. Mm -hmm. That's my take on anything beyond that. So therefore, for me to talk about this bill, I, anything beyond that I cannot talk about. I'm <laughs> sorry, because I don't see the need for any of, whether it is in Gambia or any country, you are serving a position like anybody else. You are a civil servant. So mm -hmm. if you cease to be a civil servant, then you should just get the benefits that every other civil servant is getting. That's my take on all of this thing, whether it is Gambia or any other country. Um, yeah, I'm <laughs> okay. sorry. I'll come back to you. Maybe Kex can I'll come back into that. that. But Kex, uh, this proved to be the most controversial uh, uh, bill uh, among all the ones we've discussed here. It even led to an opposition, you know, walkout. The members of the United Democratic Party, the People's Democratic Organization for Independence and Socialism, and at least one independent member walked out of assembly arguing that uh, they don't want to be associated with this kind of uh, uh, legislation. How did it go there? Uh, interesting, it uh, uh, was the first time in the history of our parliament, you know, National Assembly members walking away from the parliament. But first, I just want to address when the speaker was, uh, the minister was given a response. Yes, the speaker uh, interjected. Interjected, and which for me, you know, saying that it's a direct question, you know, it's not, it's, it's not the reality on the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, normally when bills are tabled before the parliament, what happens is that our members are given the opportunity to take the floor and debate on the merit and the principles of the bill, which the minister will come back and respond to each uh, issues that are raised during the debate, mm -hmm. that to clarify, give them clarity. And this question keep on coming, almost all the uh, four year MPs, yeah. ask this question in regards to whether Germany will be qualified because that's maybe that's based on the qualification that they will know their position when they go to oh, state, when they go to whether they will actually accept the bill or not. I see. And they were, Alimame asked, the other, the, or even the other guy, the speaker after sorting because he was uh, making comments, he said that, you know, you are going beyond what is required. You have to just discuss about the merit and the principles of the bill. And the boy decided that then if he cannot talk about what he wants to say, he would rather sit down. And the office mic and sit down. But so you all, mean they want an assurance. As well, they want as to, to be clear. Where the jam can yeah. be cut before before they when, when it comes to voting, they voting know their right. position. When they go to, they will know I their see. position. So if the minister was given an answer, mm -hmm. I didn't see anywhere where the speaker could have actually uh, stopped him. Yes, the bill might deal with in terms of you know who is qualified, who is not qualified. But national assembly, the law is there that when they are debating, you raise issues. For the person who bring the bill before the parliament I to see. clear your doubt clear. before you go into the committee state. So you don't wait until the bill is passed, then you say that, okay, the commission has to... No, the National Assembly must be clear, clear. of what they are voting for. Voting so he was for. giving an answer in regards to whether Jame was uh, qualified or not. He should not be stopped. Because the but of course, the, the, the minister's explanation was already well, clear almost, uh, before, already, the, before the, before the, before the speaker. And the speaker coming from from APRC. Ah, absolutely. I mean, the, I mean is, it, is it not really you know, reasonable to think that uh, he was actually trying 
in 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 any way he can to to avoid much clarity from the minister on the matter, so that he will not influence the decision of the MPs. Actually, one if you think in that direction, you might be actually right uh, because uh, we know the history. Yeah, the history German, between the uh, yeah, and German. You could hear, you know, that nobody. That's like his last words. I know it's not uh, the minister who will determine. That's the commission who will determine who is qualified, who is not qualified. And, and, and the so that means that already, and this man is telling so, you that this man is in conflict with the law. With the law. At the real time. So, he, so in other words. Say the minister actually made made it very clear Absolutely. what the position of the government is. Absolutely. Maybe the speaker didn't want him to say that publicly, yeah, outrightly yeah, at, at that time. Absolutely. <laughs> so, but after but eventually, it, yes. What did your position said uh, when they walk out? Yeah. The when the bill was first tabled before the parliament, the minister, you know, uh, it comes under a certificate of urgency, and that will be communicated according to the law that. Uh, when bills are introduced in parliament first, they have to be uh, gazetted for almost 14 days for the public to know what is there. But when they come under the certificate of urgency, this thing do, do not happen. So the minister bring these four bills under the certificate of urgency, and the speaker has to communicate that to the National Assembly before they start, mm -hmm. that whether they accept or ac uh, they agree to accept uh, the bill under the certificate of urgency, that has to be determined by the members. It's not the speaker. The president might have the intention that it should be considered under a certificate, but the National Assembly has the final say to either say yes, it must be this bill because of the nature it is, it must be considered on, the, considered on a certificate of emergency or not. So when this question was put to the National Assembly members, you know, they normally first at the first place you will shout yes or no. So when there's those in favor, yes said it, and they said those in those not in favor, according to the sound, you know, the nose it was even the speaker announced it that the nose have it. Mm. So, but some National Assembly member, I think Billy Jitunkara said that, no, he's calling for division. Mm. So, when he called for division, that, that means that the law permit them to go in for now uh, hand raising or head counts. And that's mm. how they called. Now, they said, now they put the question. Those who are in favor, let them raise, raise their tax. So, at the time they raised, uh, we have 30 National Assembly members, almost all from the NPP camp and the APRC camp and that of uh, NRP camp. All of them raised their hands and they have 13 number. Then, when they said those not in favor, for it to be seen under the certificate of urgency, uh, 17 people raised, and you, that uh, to you, it consists of all the uh, PDOIs, uh, UD, uh, UDP, and one independent uh, who is Busumbala constituency. That's almost uh, he's more of UDP. Ah, yeah, yeah. that's effectively <laughs> UDP. Yeah, yeah, but he because of Sabali was banned, then there was no candidate, yeah, yeah, so yeah. he went and uh, contest on an independent ticket. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this were uh, the people who were so when immediately they know that now they are going into. As considering the bill uh, under a certificate of emergency, we see that they all pack their bags and, and they left. Out. Yes, so we follow them to find out what leads to it, and they organize a small press conference. And during that press conference, the minority leader, Alaji S. Dabo, who is the, the head of the minority side of the National Assembly, uh, headed the meeting. And for them, the reason of uh, being work, uh, for them to work out, they said, you know, the bill should not be considered number one uh, regarding. Under a certificate of urgency, this is taxpayers' money that involves so many amount of money that will be given to one individual. <laughs> so it requires time and thorough scrutiny whereby they will even go and compare the other parts of the world that have such bills <laughs> to see, you know, what are involved, what, what, what does their bill entail, <laughs> just rather than just bring it. Because the moment they accept it, they will debate it that day, they will pass it that day. I so see. certificate when bills comes under a certificate of image, you don't have that you is have the, when you started you don't close until you finish. finish. So you must pass the bill that very day. So for them they feel like there's no urgent because there's no former president for now. Mm -hmm. uh, so if even Barrow is designed it for himself, you know, he has up to three years, you know, for him to be a former president if he wish not to contest in the next election. So we still have ample time that we can uh, allow this bill to come under a normal procedure. Uh, they will assign it to a committee. And those people will invite subject matter specialists that have idea about other bills in the other part of the world. Now to look at, you know, compare and bring it to at least uh, a normal standard. They said, they but, didn't. but eventually got passed. Yes, eventually, you know, they left. So the parliament requires numbers for it to have what we call you must have a quorum before you start a session, mm -hmm. and the quorum said that you must have three thirds of the national members before a session starts in parliament. And they had that. Uh, you need to have thirty one or thirty two or thirty. It's between thirty one or thirty two. I cannot actually. And they got that. They, they got that because if the NPP so, guys. So they went ahead and they and went and had it. Uh, that the speaker then look at the record and find out that they have the numbers to proceed. I didn't mean that they don't have the numbers. They the session will not have proceeded, but they have the numbers and they continue the session, and it was. Uh, 
debated, the minister responded, they went to committee stage, you know, they came with some amendments, but those are just few minor amendments that they have uh, uh, came in regards to recommendation before they passed. So the bill was passed with some amendments, and those amendments are just uh, minor things, just minor them, things. names and spelling names. errors. And not the substantive. No, not the substantive. So, uh, so, so let's look at this. Uh, uh, as, as, as appalling as it may sound <laughs> to people who vehemently oppose this. Uh, but it's, it says um, the former president, I mean the establishment of the office force, there should be an office for former president. And, and then there should be pension and graduate. Accommodation and personnel for former president, protocol service, health insurance, vehicles for former president, security, vacation, allowances of surviving spouse of former president. All are there, um, and and let's 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 take let's take a look at. Uh, they said a former president shall be provided with a fully furnished residence, including utilities and other facilities for his or her comfort. Where a former president decides to reside in his or her own residence, the government shall maintain his or her residence and prove it, provided it with telephone, internet, and other facilities for comfort. Government shall provide two cooks four housekeepers and two gardeners to serve a former president in his or her residence and such personnel shall be selected by the former president him or herself the government should provide a diplomatic passport for a former president and his or her spouse and then the allowances of surviving spouse commences on the day after the president dies terminates on the last day of the month before such widow dies is not payable to any period during which such spouse holds an appointee for elective office or position in or under the government to which uh, is attached a rate of pay. So I think one of the bone of contentions for this uh, protesting MPs was we will pay the spouse. And in there could be many spouses. Mm -hmm. Somebody what can have this, four. What if the spouse remarries? Yeah. Huh? What the spouse if they remarry? Yes, that's another big area. If, if they decided to remarry divorce the former pre president. <laughs> they didn't say where, whether they divorce the former president, they can continue to. Yeah, so so if they are four in number, if, if they are four in number, we will pay them yeah. until, the, until the widow uh, you know, herself dies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, there's a provision which, which says that the, the, the salary should be commensurate to that of the sitting president. Yeah, the sitting president, yeah. So, <laughs> what is your take on Sira? <laughs> I cannot, I really cannot do I mean, for me, I came to know about the bill, I think, a couple of days before the, um, actually, the day that it was announced that there'll be a, uh, an extraordinary session, and I have never laid eyes on the bill before. Okay. Um, most of the things that I know is from the groups that we were, we were the, you know, the working groups that we were in and the WhatsApp groups we were talking about. And for me, like I said, I really don't see the need for this. And these allowances are just... Even if you consider what is in order, just because other countries are doing it, does it mean we have to do it? Okay. Does it mean we have to do it? Oh, it doesn't mean that. We have to look at what works for us, <laughs> you know? And I, this does not work for me as a Gambian, as a citizen, as a taxpayer, this does not work for me. And I object to my taxpayers' funds being money if I'm alive and still paying tax at that time. Yeah. I vehemently object to my taxpayers' money be taxpayers, uh, be my taxes being used <laughs> to, to, to fund such a thing. There were, I mean, political pronouncements that uh, this bill might have some link with the eventual interest of the sitting president, Adam Abaro. Of course, the Minister of Justice would say this is for anybody who becomes president, not just Adam Abaro who is, who is sitting here, it's for anybody who is ex-president. Example, he said, even Jamme, even the circumstances, is not excluded. It's only his, you know, peculiar circumstances that might block him. But he said this is for everybody. Now, but there are people who said this might have a linkage with the interest of the president. For example, do you have a feeling from some of them that the president, Adam Barrow, is contemplating of, uh, of retiring in 2026, so he wants all these goodies for himself if he leaves? Actually, uh, there yeah. must have been such expressions. Well, yeah, actually, I see, you know, yeah, for me, you know, when the bill came up, because at the end of the day, uh, you tend to ask the question, uh, why even the laws in the first place? And people have argued that, you know, maybe President Barrow is planning to park, and he wants at least before he park, at least park have these laws <laughs> in place. You know, it has been a gun. You know, people will uh, interpret it the way they actually yeah, see it. Especially he has, yeah. he has, even though his, yeah, but his lieutenants have always denied, denied. but he has. He seemingly gave his. He said, even uh, you know, during his meeting with the uh, religious leaders yes. last uh, quarter before last, I guess he he kind of said that he was 
party. Uh, he he probably he talked about life after the presidency. Mm -hmm. That he's gonna be in been in a foundation. That he has found people who will work for him there, and he in fact had an office already. Exactly. So people think that uh, uh, somebody who's thinking of staying up to twenty thirty it might be too premature yes. to talk talk like that, yeah. unless you have an intention of leaving. Yeah. This bill come to reinforce. Yeah. Uh, you know, such a position that yeah. um, why why is the president rushing this? Uh, uh, absolutely. Uh, with all these goodies, I mean, it has been as we had the minister um, said it has been amended mm -hmm. to include far more far-reaching uh, provisions that are, are too comfortable absolutely. <laughs> for the public uh, to accept. No, absolutely. If you compare the bill that is uh, the the act that is repealing, yeah. uh, you have the former president's uh, act. That yes. It was here. Fifty thousand dollars every thirty days. Yes. Uh, you have uh, one security, or two security officers, and one official vehicle. You know, it's uh, Daura was enjoying those privileges uh, during their time. Yeah. During so, their so why why would anybody want that to, it, that to be multiplied? Multi triple, 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 triple or multiplication? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because like the president is. I don't top. see what is absolutely even for me that what what was being given for me is is is, is, is you get your pension and you go absolutely but then yeah. anybody uh, about any minister go. can argue with it. anybody can be president it could be me it could be you no, but come on I but that was in, me, that was in, me, for me you know, it's like no, what is not right is not right whether you are benefiting or not, not right. for me what is what if it's not right it is not right whether yeah. i am going to be benefiting or not it's not right you know, you know it's not right because uh before, prior to this one coming we have what we call the judicial bill and we all yeah. see the public oh, yeah, yes. program, and it's similar to this yes that judicial ah, officers when they leave not, office. If, not, if this is not even more lucrative. Yeah, lucrative, yeah. <laughs> but in terms of when they leave office, we'll continue to pay them until they die. You know, it's there. Yeah, we yeah, will yeah. provide them for each house. It's similar. And you could see the reaction of the public when that bill are first introduced in parliament. So at least you understand, okay, this, you know, citizens are the owners I mean, of the, the country. I mean, the judiciary will not, will not, uh, will really not forgive the the government side of the parliament <laughs> uh, for not supporting them and supporting the executive. Yeah, that's why they <laughs> bring it again in the emergency and it was passed. Yeah. Huh? Okay. So with more proposals, pro 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 yeah. really, really ridiculous for me the way that the yeah. amount of money absolutely. that's going to be spent on yeah. a former president yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, who is no longer serving. The, what they were, I heard the minister arguing that the president will still continue functions. Mm. Yeah, they are. But we, we, are, we, are, we are not hiring him anymore. Yeah. anymore. When you are not a problem, yeah, we are still on air. When, no you, when you are not a president anymore, yeah. you are no longer hired. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So therefore, we yeah. should not be paying you anymore. Yeah, absolutely. I see. You are we not should not be paying you anymore. Absolutely. Really. And that's especially this much for me. And then also the fact that you know there is no disqualification. Mm -hmm. As yeah. to who can is any former president? Mm -hmm. Well, there but should be provisions. Except, to... except how the circumstance that he dis. I mean, the minister. Yeah, but being being on the being 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 like, on the other on the wrong side of the law doesn't yeah, like, still deny yeah, your benefits. Yeah, it still yeah. means that the benefits are there. No, yeah. And if any, like for example, if well, I'm not talking Java, if in the future a president is on the wrong side of the law and they happen to go to court and they, you court. know, and he 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 is found to be not guilty. Yeah. And all these benefits There's nothing in the there. provisions yeah. that says yeah. somebody who is impeached is not included. No, no, it's, it's not there. excluded. There's yeah. nothing like There's that. And absolutely. we have to protect this interest this of the taxpayers. Yeah. This is not in the interest of taxpayers. Absolutely. This yeah. is not in our interest. Absolutely. Zero. No. And the more to me for me adding insult to injury is the certificate of urgency. Yeah. Yeah. Putting it again with this thing, certificate of urgency. Mm. What is so urgent about it? So this? you think the, the government brought the reparation bill? Uh, yeah, with a certificate of urgency to maybe to appease people who might be we, I, you know to be quite honest this was not presented to us <laughs> yeah. oh really we got the we, we got three bills mm. we got the reparations bill mm -hmm. and this was last week okay. reparation bill we've been working on for yeah, you, since yeah, yeah. last year mm -hmm. we this year this year we got the um the banning of from public office bill we got the amendment to the commission of inquiry bill we are even given bills that are not to be tabled here I but see. the former president bill we the, did, you, we, did you not never even, we did not even hear i did not even my me personally i did not even hear about it until <laughs> the day that this was it was announced and then oh, i was asking what is this what is this at first i just ignored it because i thought it was a mistake <laughs> and then um i think everybody else we were not civil society was not presented with this bill uh the civil society didn't know anything. that i am aware of there was no presentation to civil society on I this, see. So to, to, to discuss this bill so okay. we it couldn't have even been a negotiation mm -hmm. yeah it wasn't even a negotiation point because it wasn't even brought to our attention. Yeah, I see. So, 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 okay, so looks like the government for us to no, smuggle then sneeze, <laughs> no, yeah. squeeze this, no, sneak, they, no, they, they, they the smuggle the bill <laughs> yeah. and give it a certificate on you so that you know, if, 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 if people, yeah, and then and appease them with the yes. reparation yes. bill. Yeah. <laughs>
No, that's why that's why when the members were arguing that you know this uh, was imposed on them and yes. some were saying that it came the minister his justification was it's law there's a provision in the law that the minister can, can do it and the certificate of it yes the law is there but yeah. sometimes the law is not doesn't make it right it doesn't make it right because there was thing. no urgency in this you know there are certain <laughs> but they attach it with bills that will say okay this is urgency and you look at extraordinary sessions you know where you know it's costly it's, <laughs> it's different from the normal set no because you call the parliamentary out of their duty to come you pay each member twenty five thousand for that sitting I alone see it. I see so it requires so many things so you know for me when you have the victim you know it, it, it has passed all the state yeah and they were sitting next week they are coming again for the uh, last uh, legislation of the chamber they could yes. have bring all so this, why, this, need for this why was it need but they did that because they don't want it to go the normal scrutiny <laughs> yes. so they have to because if this it goes to normal it has to be committed to a committee committee and that and, committee and has that. to invite subject matter special and the recommendation pick there will be now tabled before the whole house for them to vote on that before they even start the bill I so see. if they recommended that all these things should be removed yeah. then it's voted then that will be removed all this may be they will say that okay we the president doesn't need three we will yeah. give him two yeah. they don't need two vehicles we'll give the I hotel see. so that's what they have yes. <laughs> we will pay him the air ticket but the hotel that he's going that will be from his own pocket but here is telling you that he will choose the hotel he wants yeah. and go there for months state will pay everything and maybe you will say that we will pay the ticket and the president will pay his own well i can go and choose a most expensive hotel here okay. maybe in dubai and I say the that for the first pay. time and the state go and pay that from the taxpayers <laughs> money you know as this I, they said I, okay. like so, i said my tax doll my tax dollars is yeah. yeah i do not give consent absolutely spend on that. absolutely <laughs> Course, thank it you will, it will not matter oh, absolutely <laughs> it will not matter to the government yeah um any because i'm just one person but i do not give my consent absolutely. for that so okay. good on well record. thank you very much sharon Dow, a country representative for aneke and a member of uh, the victim center board uh came saying sunny of course kex uh thank you very much journalist and thank blogger you. as well as an activist yeah. thank you both of you Thank for you. taking your time to share your insightful uh, perceptions about uh, these four bills uh, at least three that have been passed in the national assembly thank you very much gentlemen and lady thank you for having the, us thank the you. brunch will be back next week until then loving charm wishing you a great weekend Islamic microfinance is becoming an increasingly popular mechanism for poverty alleviation, especially for developing countries around the world. This microfinance service adheres to the principles of Islam as a form of social responsibility. Yona Islamic microfinance is the Islamic microfinance of choice in the Gambia, trustworthy and reliable. At Yona Islamic microfinance, we provide savings products, current accounts, 
financing products in conformity with Islam. In addition, Yona Islamic Microfinance also offers local and international remittances, takaful fund, management of zakat, management of awqaf, trading and investment, and building of strategic partnerships to bring financial services to the doorstep of the poor with donor projects, madrasas, youth organizations, women groups, and farmer organizations. Make a choice with Yona Islamic Microfinance today. For more information on Yona Islamic Microfinance, call 377-2151 or 9832-151 or visit Yona Head Office at Tipa Garage, Bakote or visit any Yona branch located countrywide near you.